Good evening, YouTube and LinkedIn community. We are live again to bring you one more exciting topic, mass communication. This is why we invite Ms. Rupali Kalaf. Hi, Rupali. Hi, Rakesh. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening, team. Good evening, people watching us live on YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, thank you, Rakesh, for this opportunity. Pleasure is all mine to LinkedIn and YouTube. I will tell you Rupali is a close friend. So, today's episode is very personal. Bhi hai, and it's going to be really exciting. So, Rupali, why don't you introduce uh, yourself to us? Yeah. So, uh, hi, he has already told my name. I come with an experience of two plus decades. Uh, basically, I'm a PG in mass communication. I started my career with an advertising agency way back in 1998. Like, you know, that was a wow. time when it was only the print media and the electronic media and the radio. There was no internet was just entering the market, but nobody knew exactly what would happen to the internet, how it will happen. And we hmm. were just trying to understand where it will go and how it will go. Of course, like later on 2000, again, the dot com bust happened. People were wondering now, is there a chance for the Internet? But if you see after two decades, Internet is completely changed. And later on, I have worked with organizations like um, a few distribution uh, IT peripheral firms. Then I was with Kodak, yeah. one of the yeah. best companies in imaging, who is known for its marketing. Uh, then I was, uh, that was in marketing communication. Then I was working with SBI Capital Markets, investment banking. I was the first person to set up the corporate communications department there. And um, eight years I worked with GSK Pharmaceuticals and then doing both India and the global roles. And then I last six years, I'm running my own agency um, into advertising, PR, offline media, online media. So a whole gamut of different kind of communications, uh, what we all talk about. Yeah, that's wow, a little wow. in a nutshell. That's a, that's a great uh, experience and a journey to share, Rupali. I'm sure, uh, you know, it comes in the time you shared it. I can really imagine how the uh, journey would have been for the last 20 years for you. Yes. Oh, it has been immense. Uh, and every day <laughs> is a learning. And, you know, there, there is never a dull day because yeah. um, the space is evolving so much. Like, you know, you hmm. every true, day true. have to be learning something new or otherwise you will wonder what is happening, where it is moving, which direction it is moving. So, yes. Yeah, sure. And uh, that's the reason we invited you, you know. So uh, we really wanted to know and understand mass communication in, in a depth, right? But uh, before we do that, uh, why don't we, you know, just define mass communication so that uh, we are on the same page and the audience also understands because to me uh, when I say mass communication it means that I have to communicate something to uh, an entire audience of mine with a single communication point and I don't know if that is uh, a correct way of defining mass communication but why don't you uh, give a light on that Yes, uh, absolutely, Rakesh. When you say a single point messaging, mass communication mm. means definitely that. So when we mm. talk about mass communication, see, communication is anything and everything. Like, you know, talking to you, interacting even on this forum is like a communication. So even if we, like two friends, when they are talking, discussing ideas, mm. exchanging mm. notes, and when we are even in a group, that is also a communication. Communication takes any form, a written form, right. a, a verbal form. But when we say mass communication, is basically the dissemination of information which has got a central message and which we give it to the entire world. So that dissemination or the broadcasting can happen in any format. It can be like, you know, you put it onto a social media which is the current trend, you can put it into like, you know, as a television, as an AV or as an ad, it can be as a radio messaging, it can be via mm. a press release, like, you know, I'm, I'm also giving you an example 
of different mediums so it becomes mm, easy mm. to understand what exactly mass communication means and it can also be like you know like you are putting it out as when a news reporting is done by a journalist that's also a mass communication so different formats it takes like you know in terms when we talk about so mass communication itself is a very broad field because when you go to study mass communication it talks about different aspects it talks about uh, like you know uh, there are a lot of specializations under it whether you want to be a specialized as a media planner or a media buyer whether you want to specialize uh, as an advertising personnel whether you want to specialize as a public relations professional mm, whether you mm. want to pursue journalism so there are different combinations which you know kind of get uncovered under the one topic which is mass communication so when okay. you enroll they teach you different different aspects so initially first one year one and a half year is all about like mm. you know focusing on the general agenda of understanding um, like you know how each of the medium works what happens in each medium what is the kind of research is required what is the kind of consumer behavior is required for you to understand and the last 6 months are completely like the specialization where you opt and you train into a specific uh, area okay okay um so rupani now uh, you obviously had a vast uh, you know experience and uh, it's easy for you to talk about mass communication uh, but for startups uh, the founders the cxos or the leaders or young professionals who are just starting uh, you know into mass communication uh what is the most exciting thing or uh, you know thing that uh, can grab their attention and uh, make them focused on mass communication if you can tell us so primarily if you are a startup if you are a professional you we all uh, agree that today is the era all about communicating if we communicate mm-hmm. rightly the messaging or what we stand for like you know it's very important to understand the key messages what are my key messages so even in communication uh, they mm. say a mind grabs maximum three messages like if you if you're talking about like you know if i talk about myself like hi my my name is rupali i am so and so i have done this you know the first two three lines you will capture the fourth fifth line what we talk about it maybe probably you will remember a little bit about it or you will ask me come again what was that next thing that you spoke mm. about so similarly mm. uh, you know when you are talking about in communication focus on getting your key messages correct you know talk about dwell deep into it what are the three key messages which i want my people or my audience to know about so a identifying your audience depending on the audience you kind of like you know um, customize your messages it's not necessary that what i am telling a startup mm. professional will mm. exactly will buy in with a corporate because the corporate will have a different way of looking at things so each one mm. has a different messaging understand whom are you addressing who is your audience and based on that you tweak your messages for if i'm talking to you as a friend my way of talking will be or my messaging will be very different but if i'm talking right. to you as a professional where i mm. go and pitch my services as hyperion brand and communication like you know mm. my agency mm. then i will talk about it like you know i i represent i have two decades of experience i have worked on this particular campaign on internal communication or i am doing right now a social media marketing campaign on this so identifying your key messages identifying what is that you want that person to remember you automatically will help you to tweak your messaging okay a uh, lot many things are popping up in my mind right now uh, you mentioned that we have to select our audience and tweak our messages right uh, but when we are advertising let's say uh, we are doing mass communication and we choose advertising as a tool on television uh, here uh, how do we uh, are you suggesting that we do multiple sets of advertising or uh, you saying we select multiple channels of advertising 
so uh, a you can do both uh, you can do multiple ads also if your budget permits okay. because okay. budget is something which we all struggle with but if you have like multiple channels so you can tweak your messaging accordingly but for example when we are talking about mass communication or broadcasting at a bigger level then as mm -hmm. an organization what does your organization stands for what what is the main key corporate messaging that you want to talk about so for example if you are doing a ad on uh, let's say one of the news channels like uh, maybe a aaj tak or republic or times any one so you know hmm. that this has got a, a national presence so here if right. i want to focus on my one particular idea it's up to the organization but if i want to focus on like you know a lot about my entire organization to be known in one go then i will go mm -hmm. with a corporate messaging where i will talk about the corporate av what exactly like you know of lately zyda scadilla is running their corporate campaign prior to that uh, mankind pharma was running their entire campaign talking about how quality is important so each mm -hmm. one like you know depending on where you are broadcasting you can tweak mm -hmm. your messages make it little common so that it it also helps you to fit into your budgets very well okay so uh, coming to your point of making it common uh, how can we make it common that it's reaching most of the audience in a correct manner because as we discussed right you said that uh, when you send out three messages i may not receive all the three right i may receive two and for uh, uh, one of the uh, message i i would say you know come again rupali right so uh, how do we ensure that these messages are reaching to maximum of audience in a clear communication so there is a process to be followed a like you know understand what is you know you identify what your audience wants to know about you are you right. there in the market you know you okay. you do your research um, it can be a different kind of research you can do a survey you can do a focused analysis group or a qualitative group basis that you will get certain inputs from the market as well then you okay. kind of like go back to your drawing board understand where this messages are mm. going uh define it accordingly in terms like um uh is this the messaging which is really the right one which is going do i have to add more to it so that like you mm. know a corrective mm. way works and the real messaging which goes around it so a research helps you to find out a lot many activities or lot many detailing how and where it is going of course we all like you know the way i said budgets is something we all struggle with and when we do a market right. research right. like a sample study or a focus study it requires a, a lot of time and it requires lot of efforts but if you even if you are a startup but if you have a field force or if you have a small um, amount of people or where you are meeting people you can always ask them so have you seen any particular ad of mine or have you seen this communication of ours do you remember anything out of it like you know this is very simple thing when you meet people okay. they may remember your face but along with the face right. you can always show them certain things that you have done in the past and you can take their input or a feedback but not like you know you may not get the complete holistic picture but definitely you will get certain information or certain ideas that can help you to work around your messaging and make it more mass based more uh, appealing to the people so in when you are running a third and like you know the way today we don't have so much of uh, you know like time span to see a particular ad we may see it for 30 seconds we may see it maximum 60 seconds so what is mm. that one key message you want people to remember mm. because whenever mm. we see ad like the mankind ad only focused on one thing that we provide quality products now that particular central messaging of quality then they have shown different aspects how they have covered it when i was recently seeing the zyder's corporate ad it only spoke about one thing which is all about that last 70 years we have been providing care 
so it mm. the care can be for anybody right from like a small child to a to a elderly person so what is a spectrum that we are covering so find out that one key key word which resonates with you because when we talk about tata it automatically comes to mind trust like you know that okay. is the first thing yeah. which we talk about it so similarly find out what is that you know resonates best with you because when mm. people ask me what does hyperion stands for and we always say that we are known for flawless execution because now mm. the most important thing in today's scenario as an agency is like if i give you the best of the execution you will come back to me again so finding that mm. right messaging mm. is like it's a process like why do i exist and why you know answering that why will help you answer a lot many questions and then you can go back and see which market your audience is so okay. if your business okay. is something which caters to a specific audience in a, a tier 2 city or a tier 3 mm. city then you will have to go and advertise there what are the channels which people watch in those markets in mm. in mumbai we are like you know kind of like exposed to so many channels and it is cluttered but if i if my audience is in tier 2 or tier 3 cities then i will have to figure it out is it the new channels the ott where i can get more response is it mm. the z5 or is it the is it the hotstar you know we can also look at this new a channels as well mm mm true true okay so uh, just summarizing uh, what you said step 1 do your research get the feedback right uh, then decide your goal of communication based on the feedback select the one key message that you want to deliver go on your drawing board and understand how you will do that right your feedback will also tell you which channel to select for your mass communication and then you can execute correct yes yes perfect execute Great. and the okay. work doesn't so stop at execution the, beyond that like yeah, you, you have, have to, to monitor again research you have to monitor it mm. whether it is really working fine for you whether we really have to again tweak the messages mm. is mm. it really resonating well so mm. it's a, it's an ongoing process and you always have to keep communicating so that, that, if you really that's exactly want. that's exactly my next question how do we measure the effectiveness of our communication because uh, i've seen many organizations deciding what to communicate but then once the message is out uh, you know there's no way of getting the feedback if my message is reaching to the right audience or my right audience is actually getting the right message that i'm sending them to right so how again do we make effective communication yeah again right. it's uh, rakesh all about research so again you get back so if mm. we are talking about a messaging which we put it on social media channels it's very easy mm. because the social media channel gives you lot of analytics and insights like you know reach impression engagement how many people have tweeted retweeted it or how many people have reposted it so it becomes easy mm. when it comes to the social media channels but if i'm talking about the traditional channels like your broadcast media um, the television so television once upon a time used to have something called as um, uh, uh, elinometer or something they used to valueometer or elinometer something they used to call so under okay. that you know that meter used to be put into certain households because this is a way back old almost 15 20 years old technique they used to put it mm. into certain household as a sample size to understand which people have viewed which ad or they have they viewed the particular ad or not what are the competitors ads how many times mm. have people are viewing the competitor ads how have they understood and basis that they again used to go and do the research then okay. apart from that when it comes to the print media similarly people used to take the cuttings and we used to kind of post it like you know on a big board carry it to the mm. people mm. ask them have you seen this particular ad or this ad and then the research used to happen so again it's like you know you have to go back to research when we talk about pr in pr we we basically like you know whenever we release a press release and the press coverage has happened we evaluate 
how much space we have got into the newspaper whether the news has appeared on the front page because front page is something which definitely people will read if i'm if mm -hmm. i'm on page 2 i'm not sure if i'm on page 3 yes because it's a right hand side page so we used to put a metric to it in understanding like you know what exactly where it has appeared how much space is that appeared even if it is on front page have i got only one single line or have i got a bigger space if i'm on a business page more than happy because business page is something which which my audience as as a company which i visualize or see it they are seeing it mm, if, is it mm. a snippet or is it a bigger area which is covering so automatically we used to measure it saying that okay like you know and then we used to look at the tonality of the message what the journalist has written because when the journalist is writing it is not in my hands my in my hands is only giving him the right information and the right messaging whenever he has asked for it is he writing it in a positive tone or a negative tone or is it going to impact me and that is where again i come back and keep my crisis team ready for example if there is a negative tone okay. to that particular news channel um, like you know i'll give you a classic example there are many times such crises keep happening some or the other way we all remember the cadbury campaign do you remember that they had come up with this uh, even the maggi one like you know where people had spoken about uh, like you know maggi is not good the for legal, health maggi should... yeah. yes equally hmm. in cadbury there were the the insects and the weeds that they were talking about and how they went back they changed the packaging they came back with the campaign so you know like certain times uh you are from the newspaper the negativity you come to know exactly what is the next steps you need to follow so mm -hmm. ultimately it's 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 a cycle that we follow like you know you start with research you come back to research you again change the messaging and you change and you you know you talk about it you get your right audience back to say what exactly if my messaging is not correct how do i correct it and you go ahead with the messaging again but one thing is there you will have to be sure about what messaging you are doing you can't continuously keep changing it because the moment you keep continuously changing your messaging you can tweak it but if you continuously keep changing the messaging it will confuse the audience what exactly you stand for like for example if i have to give a latest example you take example of misho misho started as a b2b then it again became yeah. b2c again mm. it became b2b so are mm. we actually very clear what exactly does misho stands for you know mm. Uh, mm. certain examples of very good advertising which i can talk in today's scenario is zomato you know the kind of quirkiness which zomato brings to a campaign it's, mm. it's, it's zomato it's zomato yeah correct Mm, so mm. any messaging that you do you your central theme has to be decided well in advance it has to be drilled deeper it has to come from your research it has to be you know again and again passed through the research to mm. ensure that what you are saying is absolutely the same thing what you want to communicate but again this messaging will also come through your audience who is your real audience not of course the masses but the people who you consider are are like you know because uh, when we do a stakeholder spoke we define like for example when i used to work with gsk pharma we had okay. a stakeholder spoke so where we used to say my audience is who investors because i am a listed organization environmentalist mm -hmm. because i do lot of because i have a manufacturing CSR design. activities yeah. so, so is the is a, is am I, am i harming the environment in any way my employees mm. my communication mm. messaging will mm. be very different for my employees uh, then my uh, pr or the press release or the journalist whom i am talking to so mm. you know you define a spark of different different um, stakeholders who are there and then you define your messaging but in mass communication define exactly what the organization stands for what is the image that you build and mm. you continue with this messaging so that that's a circle got it got it 
so uh, latest trends continues to be the like you know it has been changing of course over a period of time people have moved from um, like you know the broadcast mediums now it is the ott which is taking place a lot of people are placing ads on ott with 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 the pandemic we have seen the advent of the ott and like you know a lot of people wants to watch ott at night mm-hmm. they do binge watching so that's where yeah. the the ott channel comes into play then we also have uh, augmented reality and um, you know that's where people are doing off lately we are seeing a lot of mixed reality which you might see yeah. uh, uh, like you know a bag is falling from somewhere some car is flying like uh, one of the loreal campaigns loreal recently did a campaign against uh, mm. um, harassment and then like you know which they were talking about like you know uh, save save women from harassment they did a kind of like a mixed reality all around the gateway of right. india and that the same was right. released via uh, instagram so then instagram reels then your um, uh, your stories these are the latest trends and the formats which are taking shape in terms of mass mm. communication if i have to talk from the journalism or the pr perspective then there is twitter which is like you know becomes your mass channel if you want to talk about something mm. in shorts is your 140 words or 160 words um, news channel where again people want to re- read news on the go so in terms of latest trend it's more towards ai it's more towards uh, in mass communication these are the new channels which have emerged your the linkedin the facebook so which are different different social media channels we can say or uh, a segmentation part which has happened under each of these channels okay uh, so rupali moving forward i'll take a pause because we have a interesting question from audience uh, on our linkedin sure uh, mr devendra yeah. rara has commented uh, what are the difficulties faced in today's world of social media for mass communication professional i'll repeat the, the question what are the yeah. difficulties faced in today's world of social media for mass communication professionals so the primary dif- uh, technically speaking right now if we see the world is very very cluttered like everybody mm. is talking about his or her own messaging and he wants to ensure that my messaging is heard so that mm. is the biggest uh, difficulty again if we look at it fact checking are we really doing the kind of fact checking that we need to do when we go about uh, you know sharing the information into the market like mm. there would be certain biases as well we are are we doing like you know the information that we have is it um, ethical are we following the ethics of doing it and the and the biggest difficulty is you know getting your message the right coverage the right cla- um, uh, you know the uh, the the visibility so when mm. we talking about like you know doing the messaging part let's not restrict ourselves only to one particular channel how about using different channels like you know whether whether it is a, a television a radio or a print media or a social media it is important that you consistently put the same messaging across every medium and ensure that wherever you are going so whoever is reading your messages on different channels he is able to you know read and he is able to connect because mm. if even if he has read somewhere else he is able to connect it like okay yeah this is a message i have read about this organization and this is the same messaging i am reading again getting that visibility is the biggest difficulty because we are all staying in a very cluttered market and everybody like you know uh, wants to talk about his or her own services but i believe consistent messaging same key messaging following different channels will help us to address uh, this difficulties okay 
So uh, I I uh, would like to press a bit more on this topic of digital marketing versus uh, the authentic, you know, old version of marketing for mass communication, right? Uh, we spoke about television versus OTT, uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, people are more uh, friendly with using their laptops and using their mobile devices, and. Uh, we rightly said that they they spend their night period uh, binge watching, but uh, throughout the day, you know, they are on their mobile phones. However, I feel that the push messages that are sent on the mobile phone devices are really irritating, and that creates a negative image for the company. So, should that be avoided, or can that be tweaked for some effectiveness? uh it can be avoided it can be tweaked so there is no one right answer to it okay. if you are into a services where if you uh like you know where a, your audience is using your services so mm. again like you know there is a difference between a mass medium and a targeted medium and people use both the combinations if i okay. if my service is something which is going to be used you know used by a lot of people um across then it's it makes sense that i will do the push strategy but ultimately through the push strategy how many people actually view it that is something we will come to know only through the research part if we have research integrated into it for example in email campaigns we always have the numbers like you know mm. a, x number of people have opened x percentage people uh, uh, have opened your email they have spent so much time into it similarly when we talk about uh, uh, messaging on the social media we get those numbers but when we talk about whatsapp we are still not sure whether people you know you may get a blue tick when people have read the messages but beyond that there is no no we are not sure whether they are really engaging with your uh, uh, services mm. and the content that we give them but if it mm. is of use to them like if it is something which is uh, the service that you provide or the product that you sell is it related to their day-to-day -day life it definitely it mm. will help them but if it mm. is a service which is not related to day-to-day -day life or if it is used once in a while for example mm. let's talk mm. about urban company urban company provides okay. different services but do I use each of the services daily? I won't. So I no, will do no. what? I will only entertain those messages when I need them. I will only connect mm. with them when I, when I require. If I go to a restaurant to have a dinner and if that restaurant keeps sending me messages again and again, and if I'm not that kind of person who will go to the same restaurant again, I may block it. So depending on the situation where you are, which services you're providing or what product you're selling, is that medium making a sense to you? Then only you can use that medium. Otherwise, you will have to keep looking. For example, I'll, I'll give you an example of B2B companies. If a B2B okay. company tries to do a WhatsApp messaging or a SMS, it will not mm, help them. Because yeah. That's not where yeah. the audience is. But if it is somebody like a D2C brand who is selling something which is, you know, which has a market value less than 500 rupees, you will, even if it is irritating, you will still keep looking because you never know when you will need. So a lot is dependent on where you fit your and where mm. your is. Uh, yeah, mm. so that's how it can be defined. Interesting, interesting. Uh, so, Rupali, with your experience, uh, can you tell us some analytics of uh, mass communication works better, uh, you know, uh, has a better engagement in terms of OTT or TV media or mobile devices? What What is current, uh, you know, uh, better channel of, uh, you know, doing your mass communication to the audience? As I said, it is it is about your audience, where your so let's, audience. Let's let's talk. About, so let's let's categorize it. Let's categorize mm -hmm. it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say it is uh, you know uh, an FMCG company. Okay, so for FMCG mm -hmm. company, uh, 
uh, as per your analysis, which channel is uh, you know better targeting for for uh, mass communication, which has more uh, engagement with the audience? So, if when we talk about TV as our electronic media, we don't get any analysis numbers. It's it's like you know you are just disseminating the information or providing the input okay. one way. Because okay. there is no way to know unless and until you go back and you do a research, you ask the, you know, you kind of study the viewership and you understand like, you know, for example, this program was watched by so many people and so many people mm -hmm. have viewed it. So automatically the assumption is that since the viewership is this much, that means my particular ad has reached so many people. If I'm talking about a print media, it's a broadcast medium. So I will go by the readership numbers. So there are two numbers which we consider. One is the circulation number and the other is the readership. So circulation is the number of copies which are sold. So if, if uh, like, you know, for example, if we say Times of India, I'm just taking a, a number for just to give you an example of understanding. Mm -hmm. if for Times of India, if I say that I sell um, five lakh copies in a day, of course, the copies are very high. I'm just uh, yeah. giving an example. If I'm saying five lakh copies are sold in a day, so my viewership, mm. uh, my readership will be four times. It's multiplied by four. So automatically, okay. I will say that, okay, 20 lakh people have seen my particular ad. For, like, you know, though the circulation is five lakh, but readership is 20 lakhs. But when it comes to OTT channel or when it comes to the mobile devices where we have sometimes we are reading something and we see the google display ads or we are mm. looking at other um, campaigns or when we are doing the ott ad we uh, even if we don't like it we also have to kind of like you know wait for those two minutes or one minute to see that ad so at least you are sure that okay he has seen my ad or he has registered it but if you are trying to correlate this entire mass communication with the sale that has happened or the conversion it has mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. it, it will help you to create awareness. But it will not kind of give you the exact figure or an exact understanding that this has helped me to sell or this met sale. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can have a broader correlation provided like, you know, you're selling, uh, let's say, 100 pieces in the month of January and in February you sell same hundred you may feel that okay this has not worked for me if you sell 200 or 300 where you see a spot going up so yes it is mm. helping in a way where you can correlate but if you are wanting to see an actual correlation through mass communication you will never get a sales correlation it's it's a given thing it's only good to create the visibility, the awareness, the top of the mind recall that you are there in the market. And that's why people do. Uh, you might have heard about this uh, soap called Mysore Sandal Soap. Through yeah. the year, it never advertises. But only during Diwali, they will do a certain mm. amount of ad campaign. Mm. Because they know that people are going to buy my sandal soap, you know, specifically during the, festivals. Uh, during the mm. times yes and mm. the festivals otherwise have you ever noticed their ads through the year we don't see so that's how mm. uh, brands plan what exactly and how do they want to go about it similarly so this is a b2c brand similarly a b2b brand will always focus more on uh, making its presence felt via events via pr because they know my that that audience doesn't exist every day. But at the same time, mm. somewhere if I am connected mm. in a way, like for example, uh, a, ph a pharmaceutical company, because they sell medicines, so they want to tell people, like, you know, people have read their names, but they still want to talk about it, how good they are. So they will come up with once in a while a campaign like this. Banking. But mm. if you if we talk about even in banking or financial services, have we ever seen an investment banking firm like somebody like a private equity or a venture capital talk about it? They will never because that's not mm. where the audience is. Mm. The regular one is like, you know, um, um, uh, a retail banking, securities, 
they are the one who will keep advertising about the services so mm. if you are looking at measuring it um you will not find the perfect measures to it because mass communication is mass we don't know exactly uh, it reaches how many people actually yeah. right right okay so rupali let's talk about uh, do's and don'ts of mass communication right so what are the uh, common mistakes uh, in mass communication strategy that can be avoided so the most common mistakes are like you know we have to have a clear clear messaging keep on okay. like you know identifying your audience understand your audience identifying the mm. audience what exactly the audience talks about it how it is that understanding is very very important if we don't get that understanding uh, then you know it it may turn out like you know you're not addressing the right problems understand the pain points of your customers you know what is that they are looking at if you are able to understand the pain points and if you come up with the right information and the right messaging then automatically uh, your messages are completely like you know on dart on board it may address a certain universe not the entire 100% universe of your audience but there are certain universe will definitely be addressed to it where they understand so these are the certain things like uh, you know uh, putting it together how you want to take you know th- choosing the right communication channels the communication channel is also equally important in terms of whom are you addressing where is your audience is your audience actually on a mobile or is it the audience on a website or on an email is your audience mm-hmm. somebody who loves to have a personalized message so that is something very important creating a very uh, create your content calendar many times it so happens that we want to do lot many things we do it initially mm. and we let go mm. sometime mm. it so happens that i will say okay i am doing it for first two months and then i'll say oh i'm not getting any response so i stop doing it but in the bargain what happens you know whatever uh, i am building in i am again losing back on to it so even if you don't get response initially the response is definitely going to be low but as you move over a period of time you will get certain responses so continue to advertise continue to message even if your budget is limited figure it out what are the channels which really worked well it needs to have a human angle an emotional angle because your messages till the time it doesn't resonate till the time what you are mm. narrating doesn't connect with that person he is not going to look at it monitor it measure it has it worked or uh, do a ab testing of your messaging put two different messages to the same audience or put two different messages to the different audience interchange it but again ab testing also needs good one month time for you to understand whether the messaging is working not working and then accordingly you can take it forward but these are the primary things is like you know consistency is very very important of posting messaging even if i say like you know for example um every week i decide to put a message on linkedin then decide that date decide that time if you are not able to do it then don't do it at all because there is no point in doing anything where you are not doing it consistently so consistency into mm-hmm. anything is 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 very important discipline is important go back research check whether the messages have worked not worked tweak it but build that that is very important okay okay interesting okay so rupali now uh, you know the larger organizations are able to uh, you know afford a mass communication department or a pr department right uh, but as a uh, a small company or a startup founder if if we were to identify a mass communication candidate what are the key skills that uh, you know can help us identify if he is the right person uh, for us in mass communication or not 
see in any 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 kind of work understand if that person is really passionate about anything you know okay. the passion is something irrespective of whichever field he comes in what is his passion what is he what is is he really liking what he is doing evaluate mm. his past work evaluate his education while he is studying has he done any kind of social media internship or has he done any kind of uh, writing for a publication who well, um, understand mm. content becomes a key challenge many people may come and right. like you know when you interview people they may say many things but when we are when we ask them to write they are not excuse me just one second sure. <laughs> so content is very sorry so content is very very important ask them to write if they have written something in the past or give them your own case studies and tell them that this is mm. the case study all about this is the organization all about you write and you show it to me what you understand out of it okay. so you know doing this basic things um uh, major skill sets see certain skill sets can be taught but you know getting the right attitude is something with, within the organization where he is working is very very important is he a go getter is he really able to adjust into the organization so from the uh, from the education perspective definitely needed is a mass communications professionalism whether he has done one or years or two years course whether he has worked um, in a social media whether he understands the current segment ott what are his views on the way he looks at the fake or ai and the other activities so these are certain mm. things where you can measure his uh, and of course his uh, attributes his passion mm. his working ability he, is he able to like you know adjust into the environment that we are looking at so all these factors will help you but uh, writing is definitely the key and the research how he goes about the research part has he collected does he understand the consumer behavior the behavioral patterns are they changing in is he ready, ready to go back into the market if he has to go back to talk to people so like you know to ask questions internally and understand so these are the few things that one has to key, pay attention to okay and um, okay. nowadays you also get people who work as consultants like you know not necessary i do understand when it comes to startups and founders we have limited budgets and we mm. either we can put it for products or either we can get into the the marketing like you know the marketing yeah. spends yeah. it's always yeah. a catch 22 so but all said and done you know figure it out when you are market ready but till the time you are market ready you yourself can become your brand ambassador continue to you know write your brand journey onto your linkedin page or onto your uh, medium which is a blog where you get available mm -hmm. uh, you can you know you know chronicle your study continue to put certain uh, social media facebook messages don't go by how many engagement i am getting what is most important is like you know putting that messages whenever you feel like like you know on a weekly basis or once in two weeks mm -hmm. you know, twice in a week or one uh, you know like thrice in a fortnight depending on how you want to do it but you consistently communicate about your product unless like you know your product is into a critical stage where you can't disclose it because of the ip reasons or any trademark issues or everything but at least write about your journey every day a little bit about your journey mm -hmm. makes no difference where you start like you know addressing where you start building your audience along with you on that journey when you are doing it it is not necessary that you know you will uh, you spend on day 1 or like you know day 30 on your marketing but do what you can do as a startup professional to start putting in what exactly you are doing if you have met a uh, certain um, like you know not the investors but if you are saying that my product has improved a little i am doing so and so thing if 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 you are participating in a small event talk about it if you are if if you are going to be 
uh, going to some seminar, speak about it, that I'm meeting industry mm -hmm. people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to represent or I'm going to present my idea here. Like the way we are doing, like you know, similarly, yeah. if we are doing certain courses, talk about it. If you know even certain knowledge also, which is not um, not related to your field, but you feel that this is going to help you build the audience, build it, do it. Mm. But I guess, uh, you know, personally, I felt that startup founders are uh, a bit more uh, impatient. Uh, they try to initially start with a lot of activities on social media, posting content and everything. But, uh, you know, 30 days, 40 days down the line, they say, oops, I'm not getting any audience. And then they shy away from uh, posting on social media. So how often, uh, you know, it takes for a person to build an audience? It, let it be social media or any, uh, you know, OTT or uh, any channel. See, it's, it's a long haul. Marketing is a very, very, or mass communication is a very long haul game. When even if you're doing targeted uh, messaging or even if you're doing mass messaging, no, nobody is going to read it. Initially, when you put the first message, people will like, people will comment about it. But the same right. people, if it, the message doesn't resonate or even if it resonates, they may all will be in a hurry. They will not regularly look at it. But it is mm. it is our duty to consistently put it down the line. Eight to 12 months is generally the period when you will keep seeing mm. certain traction which will happen. No traction right. happens in first 30 days or 40 days or five months, six months. It's, it's a very long haul game. Unless and until, like, you know, uh, we all say it, like, you know, continue to do it till the time it reaches some mass level or, you know, we have to keep on talking about it. See, for example, even if we talk about when we are certain startups are looking at raising funds. So do we stop after reaching when we when we hear a no from one or two investors? Do we stop at that? No. no, no we no. continue to approach different people, different startups, uh, investors. We try to find whether I, I can get an angel investor or a seed investor or a private equity, whatever way. But we continue to do that. Similarly okay. is with communication. You have to keep on doing it till the time you reach that audience. And I'm sure one day it will just like it's like a bamboo shoot. Uh, you take a bamboo shoot first three, four years, you don't even see anything. And suddenly it just shoots up. So it's, mm. it's even our businesses are like that. So we all have to keep a little patience and work on those messaging. Initially, okay. it may That's not it. even be the right one to do, but you have to continuously keep doing it till the time you build on to it. Mm. Good. Eight to 12 months. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I get your message, what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> yeah. okay. so, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So Rupali, with that, uh, we come to uh, almost an end of our session. Uh, what is the one key advice that you would like to give to uh, the startup founders and CXOs for mass communication? See, one key advice which I will say is like Dell Draper to understand what does your organization stands for. Go back and find that why. The way we mm. find our why about our lives, the way we find our why, why we started um, an organization. Similarly, mm. go and find that why. Why will people buy your product? Or why will people subscribe to your services? Because Till the time you don't go back and understand, you will not find your answers. Understand your audience. Audience is the key because they are the one who are going to buy your products, going to mm. buy your services. And they, mm. of course, they will come and complain also. But how are you going to address those complaints? And what is the message that you want to give it to them? So it, it's all about the same cycle which will follow of messaging, research, messaging, mm. research, and reaching out to those audience. Great. So research is your key. Feedback is your key. And getting the feedbacks yes. from your client is 
the toughest task yes. which we will touch upon in our next session with it's rupali hopefully we yeah. will have rupali for one more session sure great <laughs> okay rupali so, uh, any, so, any any questions are there uh, i i'll uh, shoot out to the audience uh, we have good amount of uh, viewers today almost 125 attendees today Wow. So, guys, any question? Rupali is still here with us, and I'm sure uh, she'll be curious to attend your questions and answer them. So, meanwhile, Rupali, when uh, you know, since the audience is uh, you know uh, obviously thinking and uh, trying to question us. uh how did you uh, you know entered into the mass communication i'm sure you must have gone through a lot of phase of uh, you know career changes and then uh, designation no. changes, changes. fortunately it didn't happen with me so it's a very interesting okay. story so when i was doing my uh, graduation and commerce so in the second year bcom we were asked to create a project so primarily the project was all about like you know we had one subject called advertising and advertising we were so naive i'm talking about what 1994 <laughs> mm. 1994 i think most of the startup founders would have you know might have born also the the 90s what we call it and uh, so we were told that we mm. have to create a project those days there was nothing called as google there was nothing called as internet we had something called as yellow pages uh, you might yeah. in case if you might have heard about it so we picked up yeah. the yellow pages and mm. we, we were told the the mandate was very clear mm. by the professor that you have to go to any agency get from them the material come back with the material what is the campaign they have done for any particular product come back and you have to you know create a entire project sticking everything write your interpretation and everything so as we picked up the so i have studied at lala lajpat rai college haji ali so as as i picked up the oh. uh, yellow pages um, i saw the closest agency to my college was redif and uh, we were so naive that we didn't mm. even know that we are supposed to call anyone or fix appointment and go we just walked into their office and we just told okay. them that we are students of so so college and we are doing this particular campaign and we we are working on a project so there used to be a person named by the name of mr sukumar i still remember his name because he was one mm. uh, gentleman who kind of like who made us sit he went back and those were the days mm. when there was nothing available online so he went back he got us all his story boards he was working on the colgate campaign so he brought us all the leaflets the brochures uh, uh the the main ads the print ads and he gave it to us and he said okay this is what i have he explained each one of us uh, what exactly why it is called and we came back we worked on to that project and we did that analysis and so after my graduation it was like you know kind of like the the vibrancy and the support which i had got with him it was very clear to me that i want to get into this field of mass communication so okay. i you know kind of like you know that particular project helped me to give me a lot of clarity and um, the one thing which i realized uh, like you know this field has got like you work on different different campaigns all the time you are not working on to the same project same situation or the same stuff again and again and when i was seeing in and around all the people doing ca cs and i was not a number mm -hmm. person so i mm. no way i'm not going this route and i was one of the very few people who opted for mass communication um, when you know during those days and people used to say what is mass communication why mass communication what is that you are going to do so when i started working with an agency my first client at the agency was icici bank and they used to have something called as safety bonds uh, so even my parents were not able to understand what exactly the work i do so i took a mm. entire sheet from my media planner 
when the ads were appearing and i used to tell my mom that like you know this mm. is the ad that i'm working on and this is the campaign that i'm working on so then they started understanding the kind of work that i am doing mm. Mm. compared mm. See, it is much easier to understand what exactly you do in mass communication now so when yeah. i decided to even become an entrepreneur it was like a default extension that okay i want to go back to my like you know work with different brands and mm-hmm. be in ad self so mm. i was lucky enough to get that insight <laughs> pretty early rather than like you know sure, changing sure. too many things. yeah yeah, yeah. great so that was an exciting event today rupali and uh, it was a pleasure having you here and with that we come to an end and uh, i wish yes. you all the best and thank you so much for uh, giving all your insights and it was really really insightful how you spoke about mass communication and uh, told us to research and get the feedback which is the key for mass communication i'm sure uh, yeah. uh, all of us have taken those uh, notes and uh, all of us would love to interact with you again so to audience whoever wants to connect with rupali please feel free to connect with her on linkedin and signing off from my end yeah thank you so much rakesh for the opportunity thank you audience for listening to us for a good one hour it was a pleasure interacting with you rakesh thank you so Same much yeah, yeah. Bye. bye good night good night